started. My name is Andy Acord. I'm the Division Commander for the Northeast Division. Thank all of you for being here today. Uh, this is a very special occasion in which we're able to recognize a group of citizens as well as a couple of officers for coming to the aid of one of our fallen officers back on February 15th of 2014 and made a huge difference in his life as well as an impact here at the Dallas Police Department. With the uh, this very much information, uh, the police media relations unit will be taking a lot of photographs uh, through this ceremony. We also want the family and friends to know that you're welcome to take a few photographs and you would like also. At this time, I'd like to invite uh, Elise Chapman, uh, Ray Butler to the front and provide our application. Let us pray. Grace and Father, we acknowledge you this morning as being the sole provider of our lives today. We thank you for your awesome presence here. We thank you, Lord, for those who sacrifice their lives to make a difference in the lives of so many people. We pray, Father, for our life and health and We honor you today with our presence. Ask now that you will come into the midst of us and lead and direct our path today and help us to do those things that are pleasing to our sight. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. You know, we have a lot of uh, family members present here today from both Officer Burns as well as the other officers, and, and we have our, our citizens here as well. Uh, and I'd like for you to also know that though you can't see him yet, uh, that Joshua is here with us this morning. Joshua, you're supposed to be here this morning. <laughs> Good morning, Josh. Good morning. Good morning, Josh. Can you see us? <laughs> Josh, we're glad, we're glad to have you here this morning, and we're going to proceed uh, with the ceremony. And as we talked earlier, uh, we'll be bringing you back uh, to back to make some comments. But in the meantime, you'll be able to see the ceremony yourself. Thank you, Chief. Yes, sir. Uh, speaking of families, uh, I would like to recognize the family of Officer Josh Burns. Uh, first of all, we have his father, uh, Dennis Burns. Mr. Burns, you please stand. His mother, his stepmother, uh, Judy Burns. His mother, Debbie Burns. His sister, Crystal Burns. His niece, Tabitha Burns. And family friend, uh, Lisa Allen. As a side note, I'd like to point out uh, that Ms. Allen's father is retired DPD Sergeant uh, Teddy L. Jones, badge number 997. That's right, just three digits. Not four, not five, just three. He started with DPD in 1954 and retired in 1983. Uh, also, uh, some family members of, of the two officers who will be honored today, uh, Officer Smith's family and his fiancée, uh, Brittany uh, Arvila, please stand, and also his mother and father, uh, Tracy and Debbie Smith. <laughs> and we also have with us uh, Officer Ortiz's uh, wife. Uh, Suzanne Ortiz. At this time, I'd like to invite Chief Brown up to the stage. Now that we're going to the small print, I'm going to put my glasses on. On Saturday, February 15th of 2014, at approximately 12.30 p.m., Dallas Police Officer Joshua Burns and Senior Corporal Salvador Barillas responded to the disturbance call at 13,030 Aldea Road in Dallas, Texas. The officers located the suspect sitting inside his vehicle. As the officers approached, the suspect pulled a handgun and fired upon the officers several times. The officers returned fire. Officer 
confirmed was struck three times during the exchange and the suspect fled the location. Today, we are here to recognize and honor three brave and compassionate citizens who came to the aid of a severely wounded officer who had been shot multiple times. These ladies left the safety of their homes to of their homes to comfort, encourage, and give aid to a young officer despite the danger of an armed suspect still in the area. While Officer Burns was recovering in the hospital, he made the comment to me that as he lay there bleeding, he just figured everyone was coming out to watch him die. But that was not the case with these ladies. These ladies did just the opposite. We have Miss Ann Walker, who is not able to be with us today. And Ms. Walker uh, rushed from her apartment and held Officer Burns' hand and comforted him. Officer Burns stated that she asked him about his family and he began, he began to talk about his newborn son, Zachary, who's about two months old, remembering that he had everything to live for. That he had everything to live for. With us today, we do have Ms. Shimoni Fluella. Ms. Fluella, would you please rise? Ms. Shimoni Fluella. Also, hearing the shots, rushed to Officer Burns' side and placed his head in her lap and applied pressure to the bullet wound in his shoulder. Thank you, Ms. Bluebell. <laughs> we also have with us here today Ms. Taisha Fleming. Ms. Fleming, would you please rise? Ms. Taisha Fleming. A pregnant mother with two children of her own didn't hesitate to grab a curtain from her window and run to Officer Burns' aid and immediately began tending, uh, tending to the gunshot wound and just stopped. Ms. Fleming, thank you very much. <laughs> Each of these women, without thought of their own safety, came to his aid and were instrumental in the survival of Officer Burns. At this time, Officer Burns would like to make a couple of comments. Josh, you're on, buddy. Uh, hello. Um, I would just like to say that I remember when I first laid down on the ground and knowing that I needed to do something. I needed to, to try to stop the, the bleeding. And I remember trying to lean forward and I wasn't able to because of the trauma to my, to my ribs. And that's when I saw Miss Fleming run up and, uh, and begin to work on my leg, telling me that everything was going to be okay and that she was going to help me and take care of me. And I just remember seeing her face and, and the strength um, that was there and the determination to help me, uh, really, really help me, get me through that. And, uh, and Ms. Llewellyn, I, I remember when you lifted my head up and placed it in your lap. Um, I remember you caressing my head and, and patting my head and telling me that, that I was going to be okay and, and, uh, and try to pull, pull the wound on my shoulder. Um, that, that really meant a lot to me because it, it showed a lot of compassion. And uh, I remember Miss Walker, I'm sorry she couldn't be there, but um, I remember her, her coming up and kneeling down and holding my hand and uh, beginning to talk to me about my family, reminded me why, why I was fighting, and, uh, and reminded me what was there for me. And that, that really meant a lot and really helped me out. So thank you to, to all three of you for, for what you did for me. Please join me in applauding these three ladies.
Ms. Blending, please approach the stage. citizens that came to aid of officer burned that day we also have two officers we'd like to recognize officer down is one of the most heart-stopping transmissions that a field officer would hear and respond to in the field officer jason smith and officer Amaro ortiz immediately responded to the officer down call she instructed other officers to respond to the scene to set up a perimeter while they began administering first aid utilizing their officer down kits those are first aid kits Without regard to the personal safety, they came to the aid of Officer Burns while the suspect remained at large in the area. Officer Ortiz applied pressure to the various gunshot wounds sustained by Officer Burns, while Officer Smith applied a tourniquet. Their actions prevented Officer Burns from sustaining any further blood loss or going into shock before paramedics arrived. These officers' heroic actions and their willingness to place themselves in harm's way to protect the fellow officer began to the term courage under fire. Their dedication to duty, willingness to risk their lives, and their personal safety is another one of the reasons why Officer Burns is alive today. At this time, I'd like Officer Burns to come back up on the screen. Officer Burns, now you have uh, Officers uh, Smith and Ortiz. Gentlemen, being, being a police officer, I, I have I've been to assist officers before, and, and I know the kind of stress it, it can put on us uh, when, we're, when we're headed there. And, and when both of you arrive, we're both clear-headed and strong and determined uh, to do what was necessary to save you. And I'm, I'm just happy that, that uh, it, it, it was you two that were there. Um, Jason, for, for knowing how to put on the tourniquet, knowing how to use it, um, because I, I know that was a, a huge part of, of what saved my life. Um, but it, I don't know what, who knew, but it, it was almost it was a 10 minute ride from the ambulance to the hospital. And, and the entire way all the paramedics had to do was, was give me an IV um, because the bleeding was stopped and we just had to, to wait it out until, until we got to the hospital. And, and when we were arrived, we were immediately able to, to um, begin work on my, my lung, which had collapsed um, due to the, the fluid buildup of my chest cavity. Um, because, of the, because of the job of the tourniquet, they, they didn't have to worry about that. They could immediately restore my breathing, which had become very difficult um, by that time. So I, I just want to say I, I really appreciate what you did for me and, and the strength that you showed. And I remember every time I, I try to look forward and, and look down at my leg and, and see the two of you working on it, it, it gave me a lot of confidence that, that uh, I, I was going to be okay, that I was in, in really capable hands. So thank you very much.
Just a few comments. First of all, we're so grateful to uh, the citizens who helped save Joshua's life, to the officers who quick response, helped uh, bring this to a closure with all, all the uh, hard work we did at the scene uh, led to, I believe, capturing the suspect. Uh, first things first, we had to get Joshua uh, to safety and get him some uh, type of care. Uh, Joshua, you probably don't remember this, but I came to your uh, room right away before uh, you were moved up for x-rays. And uh, it's before you, you had any medication as well. And uh, your partner was there beside you. And I asked if you were OK. You said, I'm fine, Chief. Thanks for coming by. And then you started talking to your partner uh, about my looking like the rapper Lil Wayne. <laughs> And I'm, and I'm like, how much more I mean did they give this kid? <laughs> and so we talked some more, and you, you whispered to her again, your partner again, and said, when did you start uh, wearing dreadlocks? And, and, and then we stepped away, and we started talking, and said, what the, what the hell is going on? And, and then we got a picture of the suspect. And the suspect looked just like Lil Wayne. <laughs> And we start thinking, Josh was still at the scene in that moment when he was shot in his memory and his reactions to everything. So, you know, it was a good laugh because I knew you were going to be okay based on what doctors had told me. But I don't know if you ever remember any of that at all, but that was like a weird moment. <laughs> One thing I do want to say to you, Joshua, we're so grateful and blessed to have you. Uh, recovering as well as you are. Um, can't wait for you to get back to work. I know you can't wait to get back to work. Um, I see another officer, Officer Workman, sitting in the back there who is uh, who was shot in the jaw uh, during my tenure back in, uh, is that 2011? Two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. And um, the, the longest period our department has gone without losing an officer um, in the line of duty is about five years. And uh, it's, it's unfortunate that we know things like that. And uh, we've lost 80 officers in this city in the line of duty, uh, 79 men and one woman. And uh, thank God we have no new names on that memorial. Thank God that uh, these brave citizens came to your rescue, that these brave officers and many of your fellow officers uh, did their job with bravery uh, that we have here holding that precious baby of yours. And so uh, to your father, your stepmom, mom, sisters, nieces, friends, uh, God bless all of you. And what a big family you have now at this police department and all the extended friends and family of Dallas Police Department, along with all the citizens of Dallas that pour out love for this department when an officer is are, are injured. And we're just grateful for all the support we receive from the citizens. And uh, again, Joshua, get well soon. We miss you, brother. Thank you, little Wayne. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> This uh, concludes uh, the program. We invite you to enjoy it, to uh, join us for refreshments at Allen Hall. Well, thank you, everybody.